Welcome to Radio Baladi, the first Arab, Middle Eastern, and American simulcast radio show. Radio Baladi is broadcast every Friday morning on WNZK 690 AM from 8 until 9 Eastern Time on Good Morning Michigan with Layla Al Hussein. Our call in number 248 557 3300. And now, stay tuned for the best radio talk show on Arab and American issues with your host, Layla Al Hussein. <laughs> Ziad brand. Quality products from our family to yours. Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rigo Picon, Donna, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. Ziad, quality products from our family to yours. While we've been staying safe at home, scientists have been on a journey. The destination, a COVID-19 vaccine. This journey began decades ago with research into other coronaviruses. Scientists built from there with months of research and development, cooperation with other experts worldwide, and clinical trials on tens of thousands of volunteers of diverse race, age, and health status. They arrived at a safe, effective vaccine and hundreds of thousands in Michigan have already been vaccinated. But the next step is ours. We need to get the vaccine when we can. Keep wearing masks correctly and taking precautions until we reach our destination, freedom from COVID-19 and getting back to the lives we love. Discover the facts for yourself at michigan.gov slash COVID vaccine. A message from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Welcome back and thank you. I appreciate you being with us. This is Khalil Hashem, editor via Michigan.com. We got interrupted there at the beginning. I apologize for that. Today is Friday, June 18th, and thank you for being with us. Uh, the number here is 248-557-3300. Give us a call if you have a question or you have a comment on air. We thank you again for being with us. Uh, today we have an exciting program for you. We're going to be starting talking about uh, an important issue in the Middle East, specifically in Syria, and where the refugees there in the northern part of Syria are being cut off from humanitarian aid. This is a very dire situation. And with us this morning, Dr. Nahed Ghazoul, and she is with us to talk about this important issue. Uh, Dr. Razul, good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you and to your uh, listeners. Could you please turn on your camera? Um, actually, um, I said that I have technical uh, fault because I'm at the university. Um, they don't allow cameras. So okay. I tried many times. So I'm so That's sorry. That's okay. That. That's no problem at all. You, you are with us in spirit. Thank you. And we appreciate your being with us. Uh, uh, Dr. Razul is a, an activist and researcher in France, in Paris. Uh, how's the weather in Paris? Oh, it's for me, it's awful. It's very hot with the humidity. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something you have to live with. You have to get used to, yes. Yes, yes indeed. To. Well, well thank, we thank you for, uh, for you taking the time to be with us. So what's going on in Syria? Uh, well, uh, actually, um, recently, I mean, Russia decided that, you know, they will use vetoes against uh, the renewal of the humanitarian crossings uh, that allow the humanitarian aids and medical aids to enter into the northern part of Syria, mainly into Idlib and its suburbs. 
uh, we have only one crossing that is still running, which is which is called Bab al Hawa. But uh, they decided, you know, to vote against, uh, you know, keeping it open, and they want all the de deliveries to go through the regime and the uh, Russian. And we know in that, you know, um, this will cause a, a huge humanitarian crisis to more than. 4 million people, 227,000 uh, population uh, living over there. Now, what's wrong with the, with the aid going through the, uh, the Syrian government? Um, unfortunately, I mean, uh, experience, previous experience, uh, indicate that no aid can reach uh, people in need, even, you know, for bro uh, or allies of the regime. So needless to speak about uh, uh, areas that are classified by the regime and the Russians as uh, anti-regime um, areas. Um, uh, maybe, I mean, uh, some statistics will shed some light. We have more than 2 million and uh, 100,000 uh, displaced Syrians who were moved uh, from their uh, rooted or origin uh, uh, places, uh, cities, uh, uh, or uh, uh, villages, uh, because uh, they were classified as anti-regime and they were forced uh, to migrate to Idlib. Some of them have chosen to do this. And uh, Idlib is not under the control of the regime. So when you give any type of aid uh, to the regime or the Russian, it means that you know uh, those people will get nothing. We have more than one million and a half population living in uh, camps. So um, for this reason, I mean, this area is completely outside the control of the regime. The people inside it um, do not belong um, or recognize even the regime power. For this reason, it will be a real war uh, against survivor in case, you know, they decide to close the crossing. Uh, to, to some of us who are not really familiar with the situation, is there any fighting there right now? Uh, some clashes. And uh, uh, recently, um, during uh, the last two weeks, uh, there was uh, airstrikes by the Russians and the regime over um, certain areas in Idlib. Um, so, but I mean, in terms of uh, real battles and fight, no, it is uh, more or less, um, you know, ceasefire uh, case. Are there any fighters in that area? Yes, indeed. Who are they? Yeah, yeah, and uh, actually, uh, <clears throat> the Russian are trying to use this excuse um, to stop delivering the humanitarian aid. But uh, here we are speaking about an issue that should be b uh, beyond any negotiation. I mean, uh, the definitely. I mean, those fighters can get their funds from those who would support them. But we are speaking about civilians, civilians in millions, uh, people living in camps, uh, displaced people, uh, orphans, uh, a lot of disabled people, a lot of uh, old, uh, no sources of job, even no chances of job in this uh, area. So, uh, you know, for example, the food basket can play a very important role to keep these families uh, alive. And also the, the sanitary situation with COVID-19 and the delivery of the medical aids. This is an international crisis. Uh, it is not uh, something that is limited to Idlib or to fighters or because at the same time, you know, the, the airstrikes are run by fighters, by the regime fighters. So how can you justify here it is okay and there it is not okay? So the delivery of uh, every sanitarian medical uh, uh, aids to that area is very important. Uh, without it, we expect the increase uh, of the spread of COVID-19. Um, where there will be no medication, no sanitizers or treatment centers. So, how is how is the situation with COVID? What's going on with COVID right now over there? Are they getting any help? 
Um, yeah, now because you know the the crossing are still open. Uh, actually, we have three crossings, but uh, with the Russian vetoes, uh, two of them have uh, been closed. One of them in the uh, eastern part of Syria, which is Ali Arabiya, and uh, uh, two crossings in the northern uh, northern west part of Syria. One of them has been closed last year, and this was the only one that is still running uh, with the help of the uh, U.S. government and the European partners who know the meaning uh, of crossing, uh, of closing such uh, crossing. So the, the, when you say when you say they vetoed, where did they veto that? Uh, in the UN, because the UN. there will be okay. a meeting. Okay. Yeah, there okay. will be a meeting after the 10th of July. Uh, so they vote for um, you know keeping the crossing uh, open or or closing this only and uh, so uh, yeah. you know crossings so well, COVID-19 is, is much better you know now you know just answering your question yeah. uh, is uh, more or less you know uh, in a good way handled according to the availability of the medication of the vaccines of the uh, sanitizers and uh, stuff like that you know this is the only available thing so they are trying to um entertain um according to what is available yeah and uh the, 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 this aid who's distributing this aid um uh, i i think a lot of international ngos and uh, local ngos um you know uh, turkish ngos uh, uh, so they have uh, partners and they supervise and monitor uh, distributing uh, this aid yeah yeah and how how desperately needed this aid this is a lifeline uh, actually, we ran um, uh, an advocacy campaign uh, under the name of Pestacal uh, NGO and uh, Ms. Hint Kabawat. Um, it is called Lifeline because, to be honest and without any exaggeration, um, the aid that arrives this area to support four million and almost a quarter million uh, is the only lifeline in terms of uh medical aid in terms of uh food baskets food, in terms food, of you know the yeah. job running you know for these uh people who work in such ngos so it is a lifeline so we hope i mean the whole international society will will manage i mean to stop such veto and will not participate in killing more innocent sure. civilians what did the u.s do when when russia voted veto um, actually, they didn't, but they mentioned that they will vote. Oh, they will. And, uh, yeah, and, yeah, and you know that, you know, the last summit between Biden and Putin, uh, Putin was trying to shove around with the uh, staged uh, Syrian elections, with, uh, you know, to shove around with the regime again. And, uh, and uh, Mr. Biden, I mean, as, as has been reported that, you know, he was very strict that this person is a war crime and he has used chemical weapon against his people and the closing the crossings will be a red line um they hope that you know russia will not go towards this tendency and use the veto yeah okay so, and what uh, what can we do to help well, we, we should all um, start a real campaign on Twitter, on uh, all social medias, uh, Instagram, you know, uh, just to uh, have gathering in front of the UN, um, in front of the maybe the Russian embassies, um, you know, just uh, raising the slogans, um, stop killing them, uh, you know, stop closing uh, uh, crossings because they they are the lifeline for um, innocent civilian. These are humanitarian uh, crossings. And this is what everybody should know. They are humanitarian cr crossings. They are not, uh, you know, arm or weapon yeah, crossings, yeah. you see? Yeah. Because they allowed weapon to flood into Syria and into all parties. And now when it comes to humanitarian aid to keep those people alive, they won't stop it because they believe that they are opponents. So they should be uh, killed or die anyway. And maybe this is one way of killing them. We don't want this to happen. 
This is not a political issue. It is merely a humanitarian issue. We hope everybody can support us and stop with lifeline campaign. Sure, sure. And, uh, you know, uh, the fighters uh, that are there, I mean, the, they, you know, try to, you know, not launch any attacks so this can go through or, or uh, you know, or are they taking any, any uh, you know, any acts in, in regard to this? Um, no, 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 not really, to be honest. I mean, because every power that controls the ground, they want to spread peace for them to be uh, in domination. So definitely it is not in their favor to launch any attacks against, you know, convoys or against any aid that arrives. Uh, uh, you know, uh, on the opposite, it has been reported by the UN and, uh, you know, um, uh, I have read and translated many of these reports where it has been proven by evidence that the, the regime uh, with airstrikes and missiles uh, targeted the biggest convoy that was, um, you know, going into areas such as northern part of Aleppo. Uh, and at that, uh, in that in sad incident, you know, the head of the the Syrian Red Crescent have been killed. Uh, so many workers uh, in yeah. the UN aid, and so and the, it, the whole the whole thing has been damaged. Also, we know from uh, from fact experience when Ghouta was under siege and there was um, a strong international pressure for uh, humanitarian aid uh, to enter into Ghouta, uh, the regime and um, I don't know Hezbollah were, were besieging that area at that time and also Russian. They used to mix flour with uh, detergents to prevent anybody from using them. So they used to mix well, this, stuff is with each other. accusation or this is something that is proven? Proven. No, it's something proven. Yeah, it's something proven. At this proven. point, if we're talking about humanitarian, let's not mix it up with... Uh, yes, uh, yeah, with, yeah. This is why, I mean, we are worried. The entire regime and all of that. Let, let's not mix it up. Let's focus on the humanitarian aspect. Sure, of sure. That. And this is what we're I'm trying to say. Yeah, they're if, not here to defend themselves. And we don't want to use this platform so you can, you know, spread indeed. your propaganda against the regime. Let's see the humanitarian. Yeah. These these are these are much needed. Uh, you know, these are much needed uh, uh, aid that needs to go to civilians, and we want to stay as neutral as possible. Indeed. So we can. We hope that you know, regardless of how you feel about the the government there, but uh, you know, let's stay on the uh, on the neutral side, so we can uh, you know see if these people can get the aid they need, the medical and the uh, mm -hmm. the food that they need. Sure. What I'm trying to say that, you know, because maybe somebody would say, why not to go through the government and uh, the, the um, Russian? And uh, I'm just giving an example of a possible scenario of what yeah. might happen because I know. it I know. actually has a lot of accusations. I'm not dealing with we don't want to get into it and, and you know, get again into the sticky part of the uh, of, of the politics. And, and you know, sure. this guy is against this person. If we're not neutral, we can't serve civilians, and we want to stay neutral to serve civilians. Again, so what we need to do is we need to find out ways so where we can keep these crossings open, so we can get aid to civilians. Indeed, indeed, okay. we ask, we ask, uh, we ask you to support this. Sure. sure. Final thoughts, Doctor Razul. Yes. Uh, we, we hope, I mean, you know, everybody can support this campaign and put pressure on the Russian government, put uh, pressure on the go Russian government to keep the crossings open in areas that are not under the control of the regime side. And uh, uh, in, in, in doing so, um, they are providing lifelines to millions of innocent civilians who live at that part of the world. Absolutely, absolutely. We want to thank you so much for being with us, uh, and we hope that people have listened to what you said, and then they would take actions to make sure that these crossings continue to be open, and people who need the help, regardless of whose side they're on, that they would re receive the dire help that they need, and uh, you know it's very important to do that. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Absolutely. Khalil, and Absolutely. yeah, have a good day, you and your listeners. We're going to take a short break, we'll be right back. Please stay tuned. Thank you. Are your hands feeling numb? Do you feel pain opening up a jar, turning a key, 
Are you noticing that your elbow and your shoulder are becoming stiff? Or were you recently injured in your arm? Hello, I'm Dr. Albajit Katranji, and at the Katranji Hand Center, which just recently opened down the street from the Somerset Mall, we can provide you with the latest in hand, wrist, elbow, and shoulder care. Visit us at www.katranjihandcenter.com to learn the latest techniques that we have to offer you, and I look forward to taking care of you. Visit us in Troy at 1565 West Big Beaver Road, Building F, or call Katranji Hand Center for an appointment at 248-869-4263. That's 248-869-4263. Enjoy the first Syrian-style cuisine in Michigan. At Damas Cuisine and Catering, you'll find a wide selection of Syrian foods and sweets in our menu, like free cake, poise, grape leaves with steak, mashawi platter, hot mahashi, char-grilled kebab, shawarma, and much more. Get super-fast delivery from Damas Cuisine and Catering right to your door. Order online at damascuisine.com forward slash menu and track your order live. Damas Cuisine and Catering. 28841 Orchard Lake Road in Farmington Hills. Call 248-987-4985. At Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic in Dearborn, we provide effective physical therapy sessions in order to limit pain and discomfort. Top Rehab provides physical therapy care for any diagnosis prescribed by a physician, and we regularly see and treat conditions such as stroke, TMJ, fibromyalgia, sciatica, joint pain, and more. We use a variety of pain management methods including modalities, soft tissue mobilization, and therapeutic exercise. If you're in need of physical rehabilitation or physical therapy, get the highest quality health care at Top Rehab. Most insurance is accepted and we're open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday 8 to 6, Tuesday and Thursday 8 to 5, and Saturday 10 till 2. Call for an appointment today at 313 eight four six oh five 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 that's three one three eight four six oh five 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 choose top rehab physical therapy clinic on michigan avenue in dearborn life's too short to be in pain welcome back and thank you for being with us uh, this is khalil hashem uh, we're going to move to a different topic uh, a record number of arab americans are running for office in the dearborn area in the elections in august august is the primaries these Arab Americans, uh, you know, uh, uh, what we have is at least three out of uh, uh, several uh, uh, Arab Americans run in Dearborn, in Dearborn Heights, in the area. This is really a great time for us to celebrate our community is maturing. And uh, this is this is just a great news. And I'm happy to host today some of the candidates for mayoral elections in the city of Dearborn. And we're going to be starting with someone who is no stranger to to to, to us uh same berry same berry has been involved in, in in public office for some time good morning mr berry good morning Khalil. thank you for having me and, absolutely uh, thank you so much for uh, for being with us uh, we really appreciate your taking the time and uh, uh, very quickly tell us a little bit about you your service and then why do you want to run for office yes uh thank you for that question uh uh, for a good almost four decades, I'm involved in the community. I always say, if uh, if someone has the opportunity to give back to the community, that's you know, the Dearborn community has been very good to me and my family. So, uh, yeah, I've always been giving back. Uh, uh, I've served in many capacities, but the most important one, near and dear to my heart, lately was the Dearborn School Board. So, when I noticed that, uh, when I found out that uh, the seat was going to be vacant for for the mayor, city of Dearborn, I was very concerned. So I sat down with an exploratory committee and we decided that we were going to run a campaign for the next step. So uh, it's very important what's next for Dearborn. Dearborn is a good place right now. There needs to be some uh, adjustments, some changes. Uh, a lot of discussions, I've been talking a lot of our neighbors, Khalil, uh, and uh, our neighbors are not, you know, they don't hesitate to tell me their concerns. So. Uh, that's why I decided to run for the mayor. Wonderful, wonderful. What's the, what's the, in, in your opinion? What's the main issue facing Dearborn right now? You know, Khalil, that's a good question because everybody wants to talk about the sexy topics. Let's lower taxes. Let's, uh, you know, uh, to me, it's it's the reason I'm involved in local politics. You know, I've had the opportunity to run for other positions that I passed on. For me, it's always about local. Something as simple, you know, every other day we hear, just last night we heard about an accident on Ford Road and Schaefer. Every day we're hearing accidents. My father lives in uh, East Dearborn. 
Uh, and I have a sister who lives in West Dearborn. He's afraid to drive down Ford Road. 82 years old. He's a, he still can drive. You know, he's afraid to drive. So that's an issue. The parks we grew up in are no longer the parks, you know, the, the, the way they were. Uh, you know, it's sad, but you walk into a park and there's, 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 there's garbage all over the place. You know, when I have time, you know, whoever I'm there with, you know, you try to pick up as much as you can. But why? These are the local issues, you know. Our schools are doing good. Uh, we need to do, we need to pay attention to what our neighbors really, really want. Absolutely. Now, how, what, what can we do about the taxes very quickly? Taxes, uh, just like on a school board for over 10 years, you run a very tight ship. You run a very physical administration uh, and you give the opportunity for the voters to lower taxes. You can't, you know, okay, taxes, you can't lower taxes by 50% like everybody wants, you know, the people that want lower taxes. And Khalil, most of the neighbors I've talked to, they're, you know, they, they admit that taxes are high in Dearborn, could, you know, compared to a lot of the cities. But for the services that Dearborn provides us, you know, the safety, the, the fire, the public works, uh, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're okay writing that, that, that bill. Taxes are high in Dearborn compared, you know, probably one of the highest in Wayne County. So we, a Barry administration, will run a tight ship to give the opportunity for voters to start voting down these mills that were, those millages that we passed on five years ago and 10 years ago. And I, you know, I'm looking at the budget uh, moving forward. Our, our value, our taxable value is almost double what it was 10 years ago. Uh, so there is no reason to go out for more taxes. We Absolutely. need to turn that ship around. Absolutely. And I do have a plan. We don't have enough time to talk about it right now. I do have a plan that I'm ready to roll out probably in about a week or so. Absolutely. And if you send us that plan, we'd be more than happy to feature it on, on, in, in our magazine. In the, We have a special section for elections. And uh, final thought, why should people vote for you? People should vote for somebody that's been there. You know, in politics, you always hear about what I'm going to do, what I will do for you, what I will do for you. That's good. That's okay. That, you know, promises are rarely kept in politics. That's why politics is so ugly sometimes. But take a look, you know, what, you know, take a look at the candidates. You have some good choices. Uh, I believe that I'm one of the good choices. Take a look what I've done over the last 10 years, over the last, last 20 years. Visit my website, onedearborn.com. That was very important to me for, for, for the name of the website, onedearborn.com. Uh, if you have any questions, please shoot me an, uh, an email there. Uh, my phone, the phone number for the campaign is 313-400-8824. I will be happy to answer any questions. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the kind of elected official that when my phone rings, I either answer it or I'll send you a text message back when I can answer it. So do not hesitate. Uh, my vision for Dearborn is that Dearborn is a good place. There needs to be some adjustments, one being taxes. We need to improve on our services when it comes to our, uh, you know, our parks, uh, recreation. We need to Absolutely. do more for Absolutely. you to keep Absolutely. them off the streets. Everybody Absolutely. wants to give tickets, 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 and that's the way you change behavior. Yeah. Yeah. I've been involved have in a plan. football yeah. for, for many, many years. Once you catch this youth early on, you can make a difference later on in their life. So, yeah, yeah I believe in Dearborn. Thank uh, you. We want to take Dearborn from good to great. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Good luck to you. And we really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. I appreciate you, Khalil, and everything Absolutely. you do for our community. So have Thank a good day. Thank you. We're going to take a short break. Please stay tuned. Are you going to start a restaurant or a grocery store soon? Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Naji Aboud at 734-744-9796. Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Naji Aboud now, 734-744-9796. New concept products and design, the trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of $75,000 or more. New concept products and design, new location, 31185 Schoolcraft in Livonia. Learn more at www.newconceptproducts.com. Call Naji Aboud, 734-744-9796.
Get ready for an amazing experience at Ishtar Restaurant on 15 Mile Road in Sterling Heights. Enjoy excellent hospitality from owners Ali al-Baghdadi and Fatty Bonham serving the best in Mediterranean food. Try Chef Ali al-Baghdadi's famous shawarma, the best Iraqi grills and food, and the best Arabic and international dishes. Dine in our authentic atmosphere or take out. Call 586-698-2585 or check us out on Facebook. Ishtar Restaurant practices all seafood. CDC guidelines and is open every day, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Have an amazing experience today at Ishtar Restaurant, 3625 15 Mile Road, Sterling Heights. When it comes to reproductive medicine, IVF Michigan Fertility Centers are the recognized leaders. With locations in Bloomfield Hills and five other cities in Michigan and Ohio, IVF has experts in all aspects of the field. As a founding member of IVF Michigan Fertility Centers, Dr. Nicholas Shama is one of the leading reproductive endocrinologists in Michigan and Ohio. Dr. Shama has performed over 10,000 IVF cases and has helped thousands of couples fulfill their dreams of parenthood. American Board Certified in both obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive endocrinology and infertility, Dr. Nicholas Shama is a very caring, compassionate, expert physician that understands not only the medical but also the emotional toil of infertility on his patients. When it's time, get personalized care from Dr. Nicholas Shama at IVF Michigan Fertility Centers in Michigan and Ohio. Call toll-free 855-952-9600, 855-952-9600. Welcome back and thank you for being with us. Uh, we are talking to Sam Barry. He's one of the candidates for mayor in Dearborn. And, you know, there are seven people vying for mayor in Dearborn and three of them are Arab Americans. And it's, it's really interesting to see that many candidates going for office to replace Jack O'Reilly. Jack O'Reilly is retiring after a, you know, a, a long time career in the city. We wish him well. And one thing I would like to mention to you that the importance of the August primary is the fact that whoever wins that primary technically wins the election because in the primary, as you well know, both uh, parties, major parties, select their candidates. And uh, as, as you know, in America, major party candidates are the one who, or the major parties, the Republicans and Democrats, either one of those are, end up winning the election. And since the Dearborn area is mainly Democratic, so the primary narrates it between, uh, if there is any Republicans on the ticket, narrates it between between the uh, the candidates for 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 you know for the general election so whoever wins the primary technically is the winner for the for the election it's important that we go out and vote voting is one of the most important rights that we have and we practice you know we most of us in this area uh immigrants who came from different countries where we did not have that right now we do have the right and let me remind you that local elections are very important and the importance of local elections is because you're selecting the people who will take care of business in the city, take care of things that are very important, that are uh, that impact us directly, such as police, such as parks, such as uh, uh, taxes. You know, these are the people who spend our money and uh, affects the quality of life that we have. It's very important that we know who are selecting. Who should we vote for? Just because there's an Arab American on the ballot, it doesn't mean we should vote for them. We should vote for anyone who we believe is going to do the job, regardless of race, regardless of color, regardless of land of origin, regardless of who they are. This is our chance to select the right person. And selecting the right person is going to vote for the right person. And to do that, we need to understand their agenda. We need to understand what they're running for. It's not enough that somebody says, I'm going to lower taxes. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to give you know, give you the moon, and 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 you know, turn off the sun, or whatever it is. It's not enough. We need to know how. How are you going to do that? A lot of people can make promises, but if they don't tell us how they're going to do that, it, it's not really enough. So we need to be educated. We need to be educated on the issues, and we need to understand. You know, it's not enough that to vote for somebody because he's from your you know, from your neighborhood or you, is your friend. No, we need someone who can take the city forward. Dearborn is an important city in this area and uh, we, we enjoy living here. I live in Dearborn myself 
and then my children live here my children go to school and it's very important that we uh you know we we uh, we select the right people also the city council it's it's very busy we have at least uh, 13 14 people uh running for uh, uh city council 12 of them actually more than that uh, 12 of them are uh, arab americans so you know this is this is a good awakening in the community and and everybody has a run, has a right to run for office and and i'm glad that finally we are getting to a point where we're getting people to really run for office and 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 make a difference and you know for those who are running for office it's not just about sitting in, in in the city council and trying to you know just be in that uh, you know in in the in the public eye it's a lot more than that you have to do your homework it's a lot of hard work i covered uh cities in three states and my main coverage as a reporter for the in our in our news in ann arbor for the uh st petersburg times in st petersburg florida in beaumont texas and and that was my job to write about city and city affairs for for almost uh, you know 14 13 14 years and i've seen all kind of uh, of city council members and mayors and 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 city managers and so forth and so on and there's some of them who just they're just happy to be elected and they don't, don't really do their job and they don't you know it's it's a huge responsibility you're there to serve you're there to to make sure that uh, you got to do your homework and i remember uh, uh, writing stories where where city council members come to the meeting and they didn't even read their uh, their material you got to prepare you got to attend meetings you got to attend workshops this is a lot of work you know and 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 i i uh, just i'm i'm happy that there are people and uh, want to become city council members want to become mayors but i'm not sure if they really understand and i hope they do the responsibility that they are trying to take on and and become part of it's it's a huge huge responsibility it's it's and and i hope that uh, you know uh uh that, that i wish them luck and i hope that they'll be uh, uh successful council members and they'll be successful mayors because we do need a good body to really uh uh you know rule in the city not only in the city in the city of dearborn heights in 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 our city and in every uh, in every on on the local level i mean look at the school board you know this year the school board done phenomenal job in 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 the dearborn school uh, and most of them because this is what they were elected for they were elected to make sure that our children are getting a good education what we're going to do is going to take a short break we'll be right back please stay tuned when you're looking for the best in optical care, Dr. Imad Nakash is your doctor to see. With years of experience and thousands of successful procedures performed, you can trust your eyes to Dr. Imad Nakash. See Dr. Imad Nakash and his professional staff for your eye care needs. There's two locations to serve you. In Hazel Park, call 248-336-3937. 248-336-3937. In Rochester Hills, call 248-299-3937. That's 248 248- Two nine nine three nine three seven. Life is a nonprofit charity that's provided humanitarian aid and development to people and communities for over 25 years, regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background. When disaster occurs here or around the world, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Please help improve these efforts. Make your tax-deductible donation to Life now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. Kashat's Mediterranean Market in Shish Kebab offers a great array of your favorite Mediterranean meals. Meals range from lamb specialties, shawarma sandwiches, and seafood dinners. Plus, they offer big trays of your favorite food and so much more. Kashat's Mediterranean Market in Shish Kebab is located at 32839 Northwestern Highway in Farmington Hills and is open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So stop in or call Kashat's today at 248-538-9552. That number again 248-538-9552. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab will definitely leave you satisfied. Welcome back and thank you for being with us. Uh, this is Khalil Hashim with the uh, Michigan.com 
you know, eventually what we're going to do is we're going to put starting next week, uh, we're going to have a segment on in, in, in our magazine, YAMichigan.com, where we'll have as much information for you as possible about the candidates. Uh, so you can be educated, you can learn more about them, you can learn more about their plans. There'll be there are a lot of information on their websites. And uh, uh, again, I can't stress the in the the aspect of information. You know how much we need to really uh, learn about these candidates and make sure that uh, that uh, you know that that we know all we need to know about them. And uh, you know and 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 take 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 cues from whether they respond to you. They take cues from whether they are there for you or not. If, if there's something going on. If they're not gonna answer you, they're not gonna give you information about their plans, guess what? Most likely they're, gonna be, they're not gonna be responsive to you when they get to office. It's about being on time. It's about, it's about you know, being responsible. And this is what the, the whole thing is all about. It's about responsibility. Um, I've seen all kinds of elected officials in the 13, 14 years that I covered politics. Very few of them, unfortunately, unfortunately to say that, very few of them really understand the responsibility. Very few of them are qualified to be serving on city council or serving as mayors. And, uh, and it's unfortunate. We often elect the wrong people because we like their, you know, what they say or we, 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 uh, we belong to the same tribe. They belong to... What, you can't do that. You really can't do that. We cannot afford to do that anymore. Look at the city of Dearborn. Look at the taxes in the city of Dearborn. Okay, the taxes is one of the most complicated issues in the city of Dearborn. And not just in the city of Dearborn, in most cities. And what happened was over time, uh, cities used to receive, in the old days, cities used to receive a good chunk of money from the state. And over time, state officials, specifically politicians, those who run for office with the promise to save you some money and uh, you know they start cutting programs by cutting programs they may save you fifty dollars over the year but that's coming back to cost you thousands of dollars because these programs used to funnel money to the state the state used to share this money with cities I, I recall taking a look at, at budgets for cities where half of the money, half of the money that the city gets was from the from revenue sharings from states. Today they get maybe five percent. And to make up this deficit, cities starting raising taxes because they need money to do what? You know, we can't just say that the city is is spending money in a way in that way and whatever it is. Cities need money to pay for police, to pay for fire, to pay for roads, to pay for you know all of these services that they provide and since they need the money to do that it's very important that that you know otherwise they'll have no police otherwise they'll have no no fire if you call the police they're not going to show up because they're not there you know roads cannot be done sewers cannot be done you remember what happened 2014 when uh you know in 2014 when uh, when the uh, uh all our basements flooded so it's very difficult to uh, to run a city without money. So what cities started doing is they started adding, uh, 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 you know, they call it bonds, but actually it's not really bonds. What it is is that they're just borrowing money. And once they borrow money, they add it to the taxes. And the taxes start going up and up and up and up. And if you own a home in the city of Dearborn right now, let's say you own a home that is a market value two hundred thousand dollars, and the city is going to assess it as at, at two hundred thousand dollars. That means you're going to be taxed on hundred thousand. The current millage in the city of Dearborn is sixty-two point three, sixty-two point three. So you multiply hundred by sixty-two point three. So your taxes are six thousand three hundred dollars a, a, a year in the city of Dearborn. That means you're going to be paying the city of Dearborn $500 to live in your own home after you pay your home, after you pay your home. Can you imagine that you are on, on limited income and then you have to pay the city $500 just to live in your home? This is, this is not right, okay? And, you know, the city of Dearborn Heights is pretty close to that. It's, I think their, their, their millage is, total millage is 50. But 
in the city of Dearborn uh, and other cities around us as well. You know, Livonia is a little bit lower, townships are a little bit lower because they provide less services, but it's just it's just not it's, it's just too much i mean can you imagine your your home is worth four or five hundred thousand then your taxes is going to be what twelve thousand dollars then you pay in the city of dearborn a thousand dollars a month to live in your home that's that's too much can you imagine your your you no, you decide to retire you already paid your home and and now you still have to pay the city a thousand dollars to really live in your own home it's it's just uh it's it's becoming to be a huge burden on everyone to 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 really pay their taxes this is why at certain you know we anticipate that down the road that we're going to have a major problem with people being able to pay their taxes and uh, miss willis are you with us this morning uh yes hello good morning good morning could you turn on your camera uh yeah you like? run a little late this morning that's okay. That's okay. If you, if you like to turn your camera on so we can start the interview. Yes. Just give me a couple of minutes here. No problems at all. Again, you know, taxing, taxation, and then, I mean, look at the streets and, and, and we're still better than other cities, but we could do better on the streets. We could do better on, on uh, policing. Uh, the police department is very hard trying to, you know, enforce the uh, the, the laws. However, uh, 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 you know, more they need more help. They need more training. All of that costs money. And uh, uh, could you help me pronounce your name, please? Colette. Colette. Okay, yeah. Miss Miss Willis. Uh, uh, like everybody else, I'm just going to ask you. Can you tell us a little bit about you and why you want to run for mayor? Well, uh, you guys know my name is Colette Cherie Willis. Um, I live in Dearborn, Michigan from 2016 to now. I live in a city hall art space loft, which is in East Dear downtown Dearborn. Uh, it's the old city hall. They converted it to lofts for a residence artist. Uh, there are about 53 apartments here. And um, I'm one of the resident artists here. And um, I am a full-time student studying political science right now. Um, I'm at a Henry Ford College right now, but um, I am a 10-year veteran in the United States Army National Guard. Um, and the reason that I'm running for mayor is just to make a difference. Me just becoming a nominee, I'm the first African-American woman to make it this far in 2021. So that tells you a lot about the progress that, you know, if I didn't just say, let me just do it, it would just be the usual candidates. I'm not trying to throw any shade or anything, but that's the truth. It would just be the usual candidates. You know what I mean? So like me just being a young millennial, I know that we're, I'm 32 years old. So I, I know that we're supposed to be the leaders of this world. We're supposed to step up and do other things that other than just creative. Like I'm in the artist lofts, but I, I am uh, uh, reacting to what's going on in the world. When I visit the South end of Dearborn, I said, no, this is wrong. This is wrong. No one has done anything. You know what I mean? Like when you go there, you can literally start to feel sick if you stay there too long, if you're not used to that environment. So I know that that's, that has to do with the law. That's the law. So what, the government- what, what are some of the important issues uh, uh, in the city that you would be addressing as mayor? Number one, south end of Dearborn. Number two, east end of Dearborn. There's too much pollution. There's too much pollution. We have to bring it into it. We have to have laws in our city, ordinance in our city. That's number one. Number two, the police, like you were just speaking about. Um, I'm sorry, I just came in late. I'm, I have okay. a daughter, I'm a single parent. But anyway, um, yes, people are speeding down the residential streets. I, I'm everywhere through the city. I'm on foot a lot. Like I said, I've been a soldier my whole life almost. So I, I, I look at life differently. I walk around, I talk to people. That's how I made it this far. Just by being in the community and talking to people and getting a feel for what they feel. We all feel the same. We need someone that represents the actual people. And that's what I'm about. So for as far as the, the speeding, the policing, yes, there's still a lot of racism in Dearborn. People don't want to admit it, but it's true. There's still a lot of racism in the system. So just with me just being nominated to make it this far, we have to bring diversity in everything, in the police, in the fire department, whatever, in every single aspect of the government, we need to have diversity. And it's not just about me being a black woman, it's about every race, every creed, every color, everybody needs to be and represented in the government and have to engage with the government. It's been the same old people for the longest. 
It can't be like that forever. That's why I'm just, I'm a visionary. I, I like to see us. What's, bring, your vision? What's your vision for Dearborn? I want us to innovate. I want us to innovate. We need to actually stop polluting the world. The pollution is number one. We have to do that. It, there has to be justice over there in the South and number one. But we can innovate. We Everybody's moving to clean energy because the climate change. We have to bring innovation here. We have to become a walkable city. Everybody's driving around down Michigan Avenue. There's so much pollution here. We have to change the culture of our city and how we live in our city. It has to become more walkable. We can have more, more a recreation. When I want to bring my daughter to do something fun, I have to take her somewhere else. Dearborn doesn't have really too much fun stuff. And when I go and see the kids in the street and they're driving, riding their bikes in the middle of the street and things like that. And I'm like, what do y'all want? I'm talking to the kids just a couple of days ago. They're like, we want a skate park. We want different stuff to do. We want some fun invite things to do. So we really have to innovate the city and bring all of the stuff that would bring tourism here. You know what I mean? Like we can actually have things for the kids that live here that could be cooler than uh, Detroit, you know, cause a lot of people go to Detroit for fun. You know what I mean? Like, but we can have that stuff here. Sure. sure. So and that's for the final moment, together. for the final minute that we have, why should people vote for you? Let's make history. Let's make a difference. Let's 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 not go with the status quo. If you vote for me, then you're make you you're actually taking a chance on making history because I'm the first black woman. I'm young. I'm a millennial. I'm ambitious. You know what I mean? Like I represent the new Dearborn. So whether you like it or not, I'm here. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm an option for you to actually, you know, make a difference, do something different this time and see how it goes. And I promise okay. you. I can, I how can people reach you if they if they need any information from you? I have Facebook, I have, um, Facebook is the best way. Just my name is Colette Willis on Facebook, Colette Cherie Willis, and I'm always responsive on there. It's 2021, everybody has a Facebook. You can email me, colette.willis at gmail.com. Um, I'm putting up a website soon. But um, August 3rd, 2021, everybody, please go out and vote. And let's make a difference. Let's have a new Dearborn. Thank you. We appreciate you being with us. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye now. Thank we're going to be also, uh, next we're going to be joined by uh, our, our friend Gary Warnchek. Uh, good morning, Mr. Warnchek. Good morning. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure. We appreciate it. Like everybody else, uh, same questions. Uh, tell us a little bit about you and why do you want to run for mayor? Well, um, I have been a, a newspaper editor in our in our community. I've been a state representative, and I've represented us on the Wayne County Commission, uh, where I was chairman of the commission, elected by my colleagues, um, because they recognize my leadership ability. Um, I want to be mayor because I believe I have the experience and background that we need uh, to lead Dearborn forward through what could be some uncertain times ahead. And I also want to give back to the community that's been so good to me and my family. Um, you know, I was raised here. My wife Vivian and I raised our, our family here, and now um, our daughter has our grandchildren growing up here. So I'm very personally invested in Dearborn and its success. So I believe that uh, that I can um, have a hand in moving Dearborn forward and, and keeping us on a good path. Absolutely. You said you were a newspaper editor. Which newspaper? The Dearborn Press and Guide. Back okay. when there was... Uh, there was actually a functioning staff where we would have sure, sure. Um, a staff of 15 or 20 people, beat reporters who would cover sure. City Hall and, and the school sure. district and such. Yeah, I used to I used to write for the Arbor News. I wrote there for 10 years, so ah, uh, okay. I, I know I know what you're talking about. And I did yes. you know, I did report on uh, City Halls in three states: in Florida, in Texas, and in Ann Arbor here in Michigan. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I don't want to de deprive you of your time. Uh, what are the most important issues in the city? Well, I think the most important issue is keeping Dearborn a great place to live. And I know that's a broad statement, but it covers all of the bases. It's keeping a good quality of life with safe and secure neighborhoods, uh, preserving our parks and pools, um, keeping our services strong and growing our business districts. Um, so that may be the most important issue to me, keeping Dearborn a great place to live. But another important um, issue, I think, in this race is leadership, which is less tangible than looking at issues like like taxes and, and trash pickup. But I think leadership is very important in this because we're losing a lot of experience um, at City Hall, not just with a longtime mayor retiring, but we're going to have three brand new faces out of seven on the city council. So I think experience is more important than ever. Absolutely. You know, before, before you came on earlier, I was talking about 
you know, voting for the right person. This is the time mm -hmm. for the residents to hire. The, 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 they're not really voting. They're hiring the people to, represent, right. them, to represent their interest. And right. regardless of, of, of race, uh, land of origin, uh, color, whatever it is, they need to really vote for the right person, the right leader, the person who is really willing to do whatever it takes to move the city forward and keep it safe. You're absolutely you bring right. up a good point. Uh, there are a lot of people who think you should vote for somebody because uh, they're of this uh, nationality, uh, this gender. Uh, I agree with you. I think, you know what, let's just vote for the, for the person who's best for the job. Okay, so and absolutely. we'll trust the voters' judgment. Absolutely, absolutely. The voters are always right. Yeah, and we hope that, you know, most of you, the candidates, provide as much information as possible. We would like mm -hmm. for our community to make a, an educated decision so they know not only that what I want to do for Dearborn is this is how I'm going to do it as well. So mm -hmm. people can make the right decision and bring in the, the right person to, to the job. This is a very important city and it's a very important post. Yes, it's uh, important to all of us, yes. Absolutely. And final question for you, why should people for, uh, vote for you? I think people should vote for me because experience does matter. I mean, it sounds like something you hear a lot, but experience matters. And I know everybody is somehow touting experience, but no one has uh, the experience that I have in government. Um, uh, no one has the experience I have as far as um, being here through Dearborn's history. I think there's value in having been involved in decision making here, you know, more than the last four or eight years. Um, because you have a historical perspective. With me also, you don't have to guess whether I do a good job. You know, um, I've served Dearborn 20 years in public office, and you either know I've done a good job or you don't think I've got a, done a good job. There's not a lot of guesswork there. You know what you're getting with me. Um, so I think that uh, for those reasons, I think that people should vote for me in the, for, in the primary election August 3rd. Absolutely. And uh, how can people reach you? My website is GaryFordDearborn.com. That's GaryFordDearborn.com. And um, there are all kinds of ways to contact me in there. There's a, my email, my phone, all of that is listed on the website. Go, go to for, uh, GaryFordDearborn.com. And um, you can not, not only find ways to contact me, but you can uh, learn about my vision for the city, how to help the campaign, and, and all about my background in public service. Thank you so much. We appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Good luck to you, and uh, hopefully the, the, the voters will make, a, will make the right decision. Yes. Thank you so much. Voters are always right. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I want to thank everyone who joined us. Uh, please vote for the right person. Uh, just go out and vote. I don't care who you vote for. Again, vote for the right person, regardless of race, regardless of color, regardless of, of land of origin. Just vote for the right person. Thank you so much. Thank you for everyone. Thank you, Mike, for a great production. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye now.